Hello, fellas, and welcome back to Cringe Confessional, the only show on the internet that asks, what's wrong with you? I built a website, cringe.coney.gg, where users could anonymously send me the worst thing that's ever happened to them. Harrowing stories of love lost and a lot of pooped pants. If you watch this more than once, you're gonna see a lot of poop pants. I have my mods go through and pick 40 of the best stories, and we're gonna go through them tonight, but I'm not alone. I have my good buddy, the cringe bot, 3,000 here to help me. Isn't that right, cringe bot? Please feed me your trauma. I'm a little trauma piggy. Yum, 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 yum. Little weird when you put it like that. I wish you wouldn't say that, tr cringe bot. Let's, we'll keep working on it. We're gonna iron out some bugs. Thanks for tuning in to Cringe Confessional. Let's get into some stories. Back in eighth grade, during art class, the teacher would allow to watch anime while I draw. For some strange reason, I decided to watch the worst anime I could possibly be watching during school. What is it? What do you think it is? It's not porn. Come on. Stop. I'll bet you five gifties it's not porn. I was watching Kill La Kill. Fucking told you. That's basically porn. Is Kill La Kill the one with the girl who is very sk- Yup, there she is, Ryuko. Yup, that's pretty bad. <laughs> but at least it wasn't porn. Please continue. I was watching Kill La Kill, which is a show about half-naked girls fighting with scissor blades. I know, I see it right here. One of the characters in the show's skirt flew up, and the guy sitting behind caught a glimpse of what I was watching oh, no. and started laugh their asses off. <laughs> oh, no. They caught you! What is this dude watching? After that, I thought learned my lesson, okay. but apparently not. What happened then? I sat in the corner of the room the next day, so nobody could see what I was watching well, and started watching Hajime no Ibo. That's the boxing anime, right? That one's not bad. During one of the fight scenes in the show, there was a little sister character rooting for her brother in the crowd. Uh-huh. And screamed Onita! really loudly with an echo which made the whole class start laughing. Okay. How loud are you listening to anime? Part of me thinks you wanted some attention. At this point, if the whole class can hear it, how loud are you listening to the- you, Bro, he's on full volume? How about we invest in some AirPods? Did you really not have any other way to do this discreetly? I'm glad you got in trouble. I hope you learned your lesson. Morale of the story anime was a mistake. You did. You did. Thank God. Every anime will have this shit, I assume. I don't know. I've never watched it. You can't even understand Japanese. Why was it so loud? Wait, that's true. Was it- were you- were you watching subs? The whole class- has to listen to these Japanese ramblings, and then randomly, in the middle of the class, a little girl goes, Oni-chan! I would laugh too! And then I beat you up. If I was the teacher, I would have beat you up, bro. <laughs> what the? Oh my god. I was working a summer job at Little Caesars. One morning, I was working with just one other guy, uh -huh. and only I knew how to use the cash register. The doorbell was broken the day, so my co-worker kept having to call out to me when somebody came in so I could work the cash. Okay. He thought it would be very funny to keep pranking me and telling me somebody came in. <laughs> so I would walk to the front of the store and see nobody is there and he would laugh. Classic. Gotcha again! We have no customers. We're gonna be out of a job in two months. So I started having to stand on my tiptoes to look over the pizza oven and see if someone was there before I walked over. Uh-oh, short guy. <laughs> Short guy, right? He told me someone came in. I looked <laughs> over the oven and saw nobody, and called back to him, no there's not. I'm not falling for it. He continues to insist to me that there is. No there's not. I'm looking right now. Nobody oh is there. My god. After continuing this back and forth with him out loud for a oh little longer. Oh my god! I go to the front and there is a very <laughs> mortified little person waiting at the counter who heard the whole exchange. Oh, How no. do you apologize for that? I think I tried complimented her Lego movie keychain. Oh no! I thought it was a little person, not a little person. You know what I mean? I thought it was just like a like a like a five foot person or so. Oh no! They thought you were playing a prank on them. The prank was supposed to be on you, but that guy in the little Caesars is like, why are these guys being assholes? I just came in for my hot and ready pepperoni fresh pizza. And then honestly, you complimenting her sounds so condescending. Complimenting her Lego movie keychain. That's so empty. You're an asshole. You and your friend. I hope you both get fired. Oh wait, you were working a summer job at Little Caesars. You don't work there anymore. Okay. That guy got you good though. He made you look like a piece of shit. He looked like a fine upstanding uh, employee. 
You look like an asshole. You know, as soon as a little person walked through the door, he was like, Oh, he's not, I know it. Oh, he's not going to believe it. I got his ass now. Oh, he knew. He knew he got, he, he hit the jackpot. A plan really came together. When I was probably like 10, I was in Cracker Barrel. Woo! We love Cracker Barrel. Delicious sweet tea, breakfast all day. Cracker Barrel, delicious. I always wanted the zebra strip gum because oh, my brother bad. said that it was the shit. It's but so bad. But my parents bad. never let me get it. It's so bad. It, it runs out of flavor right away. Wait, why wouldn't your parents let you get it? It's like a dollar. Penny pinchers? A duck can't can be poor if you go to Cracker Barrel. Cracker Barrel is like exclusively, well, not exclusively for poor people. It's for poor people or well-off white yuppies on their way like to Disney World. I'm definitely projecting, by the way, with the Disney World trip. Whenever we went to Disney World, oh baby, we always thought that the Cracker Barrel, it was delicious. Eventually, I just really wanted it. <gasps> so I stole it and oh, put it in my pocket. No. Once we got to the car, I pulled it out and my dad saw me. Okay, who did? How did you think you were going to get away with that? You pulled it out instantly the second you'll get back to the car. Oh, hell yeah. My dad won't snitch. He told me to go back inside and put it back. Uh-huh. I screamed at him until he grabbed my hand and tried to take it from me. Okay. I don't think you understand how much <laughs> I wanted those 10 seconds of okay. flavor and lame-ass tattoos. Yeah? I then punched him in the stomach. Oh, man. And because he ate three adult pancakes, <laughs> he threw up on me. He was probably standing right over you, too. He put it, it was totally, it, it was just involuntary. That shit was probably still warm, too. He just ate it. Oh, dude. Oh, mushy probably got in your hair. I wrenched my arm out of his hand and ran around the parking lot. I also shit my pants while running, and I have never received so many spankings in my life, bro. Okay, be honest with me, Chatter. Was that last part a little bit of embellishment? Did we embellish a bit? We didn't have to. You had enough sauce on the rest of the of the story. You didn't need that little bit of garnish at the end. I think you had plenty. But if that's true, what a fucked up day. Just to be clear, this is all about zebra stripe gum. Which, once you've had it, you realize this, it's bad. It's like a dollar for 15 and they lose flavor within five seconds. It was just the forbidden fruit. You committed a petty crime. Your dad got your hand. You punched him in the stomach. He throws up on you. You run away to where? And then you shit your pants, but you were eating at the Cracker Barrel, so. I feel like once you try the gum, you're gonna realize how much this rift in your relationship with your dad was not worth it. You're gonna be regretting that for the rest of your life. In fifth grade. I love it when Rod pops the grade. Love it when he does that. In fifth grade, an Asian family moved to next door. Every time it's The good. mom spoke some English, and the dad barely spoke any. Uh-oh, time for some racism! Their son was barely old enough to speak full sentences. Okay. One day, while I'm outside, the kid shouts ni hu at me. <laughs> I don't think he said I get that. quite excited because in school, uh -huh. we were learning some basic Chinese. Yeah. Chat, don't correct the TTS. This isn't a real person reading the story. For the next couple of weeks, I worked extra hard studying some conversational Chinese with the help from my teacher. Sure. I so badly wanted to impress and speak with our neighbors. That's sweet. That's After a nice, working that's up the a current, nice goal. I start speaking Chinese to the mom. Okay. After a few moments, she stops <laughs> me and says, Honey, we are Korean. I did not go back outside for at least a week. Oh, God. Why did the kid say ni hao? I, I guess that might, does that, what does that mean? Does that mean something in Korean? Oh, what could, I, I'm confused now. It's not anything in Korean. Okay, yeah. After Holy a few moments, shit. the kid probably heard ni hu from some show. I bet I know what show too. I bet I know the show. I can think of one show in particular. Yup. Caillou, by the way, is the answer to that joke. I realize not any, not all of you know about who Caillou is. Because it's ni hao kai Lan. No, it's Kai Lan. What the fuck? <laughs> I thought it was Ni, ha ni Hao Caillou. I don't know why I thought that. It is Kai Lan. I will say, and this is not a joke, there wasn't a lot of, like, Korean exposure in media when I was younger. There was, like, you know, you had a sense of, like, what was Chinese and what was Japanese. So when I was younger, there I didn't know Korea was, like, a thing. 
Like, 90s and 2000s. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not until I was, like, I don't know, like, maybe middle school, high school? So, like, when you're a kid, it's, like, it's Chinese and Japanese, and that's really all you know for a little while. At least, it's probably not true anymore, actually. That's a dumb thing to say. Because now the world is much more, like, open and visible. It's not just what you see on TV, and K-pop is huge, right? So, yeah, not anymore for sure. Yeah. When I went to a dress-up party for my friend's birthday, yeah. I had a hard time choosing who to go with, and I went to Rigby from regular show. Okay. I was putting on my face paint. The brown paint my mom bought was darker than she thought, so when she was done, I was blackface. Oh! Uh Oh, another racism moment. Not two in a row. When I got there, I was the only one dressed up. Oh, fuck. They got way worse. It turns out my brain thought it said dress up, but it said dress up in clothes you don't mind getting wet. <laughs> also, the mom of my friend was scared when she first saw me. Their whole family is black people. Oh my god. Worst of all, my crush was there and my entire oh, friend group was there. Oh my god. Me and my friends oh still my joke god. about oh it god. to this day. Oh but my, my crush oh never my talked to me oh after god. that oh day, and it was never loud oh at my, my friend's god. house ever again. Good, I hope you were excommunicated. You should have been launched out of your state via catapult. Dude, the audacity to show up in blackface when nobody else is dressed up. Age is crucial here? I don't think we have anything. It's a dress-up party for a friend's birthday. Okay, but hold on. I found something crucial here. I was putting on my face paint. The brown paint my mom bought was darker than she thought, so when she was done, I was blackface. This is mom's fault. How did mom let you out of the house like that? Why would mom do that? Mom would know what would happen. She wanted you to get launched in a catapult over state lines. She wanted you to get sent into the ocean. Your mom doesn't love you, and this is how you find out on the Coney stream. Sent you to a party wearing blackface. Good lord. So it was November 9th, 2004, and I had just come back from a movie date with a girl I had a crush on for years. Uh-huh. Absolute 10 out of 10. Ooh. We got to my bedroom in my apartment, and we started having fun in my bed. Why'd you say it like that? We're all adults here. However, neither of us noticed the front door to my apartment opening and shutting as my roommate came into the apartment. Okay. Now, you may recall I know the exact date this event happened, and that is because this is the date Halo 2 came out. Okay? Thinking I was asleep or something, my roommate burst through the door, wearing a Master Chief helmet he had bought at GameStop with his Dragon Ball Z shirt on. No way. Now, this helmet was not meant to be worn <laughs> as a mask, so it had no way to see outside it. No way. A visit from the real Master Chief. Stepping into your bedroom while you're getting down. Master Chief, what are you doing here? Finishing this fight. Tag me in. Tag me in. I'll get it done. All right, please continue. Now, this helmet was not meant to be worn as a mask. Okay. So had no way to see outside it. Okay. <laughs> so there was my roommate chanting, it's Halo time, baby, and left Woo! on top of the two of us. He instantly knew there was a second <laughs> body and took off the helmet and said, I'm sorry, man, <laughs> and scooted away from the two of us. Oh. We looked at each other, decided to pull up our pants and part ways. Okay. I spent the rest of the night playing Halo 2 with my roommate. The good ending! The good ending! You got the good ending! Honestly, dude, the night Halo 2 came out, you would have never had that experience again. Nothing hits like the Halo 2 night coming out. Seriously. You may have missed out on, on a night of pleasure, but you, you, you got some great bonding time with your friend and roommate, who sounds sick, by the way. Your roommate sounds awesome. You'll remember that night for the rest of your life. That's a great story. By the way, how old are you? You had an apartment in 2004. Let's say they're 20 in 2004, so 1984. You're older than me. Hey, thanks for watching the stream. Bless you for that. So I'm trying to think of it from her perspective, because if she's, I, I assume she, if she's a 10 out of 10, she's a gorgeous young lady. She doesn't know what Halo is. So she just thinks this is like a setup. She thinks your roommate is, like, in on something? Like, you're tricking? Yeah, she has no idea what Halo... Yeah, this is, like, Halo 2, Chief. Like, she doesn't know who Master Chief is at all. Your roommate just burst into the room in basically a co She doesn't know what Dragon Ball is, either. She thinks he's just in a costume. She probably thinks you do this to all the girls you take home. Like, this is a... She thinks Halo is a sex act. It's Halo time, baby! No, 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 I don't want Halo. I don't want Halo. This might be one of my favorite stories in cringe confessional history i love this tale just master chief bursting into your room while you're trying to get down bless you for writing in <laughs> so i was at school in one road grade one 
<laughs> so, I was at school in one road grade. It's time to go back. First third grade? Go back to school. One of my friends told me that if you flip your jacket with your hands in the pockets and sleeves, yeah. then jump off the tallest part of our playground and flap my wings, and I... <laughs> you did it, didn't you? I know that you did it. I didn't fly and broke my arm and chipped my teeth. Yeah, and got a little bit of brain damage, too, to make you think that one RD grade is the way to, uh... <laughs> Is the way to type that, yeah. Smartest Coney viewer? <laughs> the one RD grade really ties this all up in a bow, right? Because, like, with the rest of it, it's like, oh, you were a stupid kid, lol. You're just fucking dumb. You're stupid. You are a dumb person. This happened yesterday. I have a first grader in the chat that's crying in a cast. I played tennis in seventh grade. Yeah. One day me and my teammate were messing around during tennis practice and we found leftover fruit lying around school ground. We picked them up and hit them with our tennis rackets. They exploded. I was fascinated by how the tennis racket totally shredded the apple into oh. little cubes. That is kind of cool actually. I've never seen that. So later that day I decided to do it in my family room. Why? What? Why did you do that? Why did you do that? <laughs> New dumbest chatter. We have a new dumbest chatter. Congratulations to this guy who has beat out the first the third grader who jumped off a playground. We have a new dumb champ. I grabbed an apple and started bouncing it on my tennis racket. Okay. Apple chunks got everywhere. I tried to clean it up, but my parents still found chunks around the room. Imagine being that parent. Hey, why are there apple chunks everywhere? Oh, I was bouncing an apple to, to chop it up with my tennis racket. Son, we have knives. Yeah, but watch this. Stop doing that! They asked what happened, and I denied knowing anything. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, did you guys, like, lose an apple or several? Dad's got a problem. Dad be hiding apples and probably cheating on you, Mom. What else could Dad be hiding? However, my parents had set up a camera in the family <laughs> room, and they looked back on the footage to see me bouncing an apple on my tennis racket. They made fun of me for years. I hope they still don't have the footage. <laughs> you were on candid camera. You must have gotten up to a lot of antics. What kind of antics and misadventures were you getting into that your parents were like, that's it, I'm buying a camera. Listen, can you ask your parents to send me the footage? I say this a lot. But I gotta see this video of you bouncing an apple on the... Because, like, it doesn't just chop once. Like, you have to keep going, right? You have to keep trying to blend it. It's gonna take a couple tries. My family recorded me as a young kid in hopes of me getting into America's Funniest Home Video, so I get it. That was a whole plot point on some old, like, Nickelodeon cartoon shows and shit where, like... I forget what shows, but it might have been Rugrats. Where, like, Stu buys a camcorder. He's like, all right, do something funny. That was a real thing. When I was 14, there was this really hot life. Oh, I love, I so love me, Ryan. Being yeah. the genius I am, decided to fake drown. I would hold my head underwater for like 50 seconds, and the come back up fake drown to get CPR from them. Did so you, I did, and about 15 seconds did in, you die? I realized yeah, did you, I overestimated <laughs> my lung capacity and gasped for air. At New this point, record! I, New dumbest chatter! Actually broke the record three times in one night. Unbelievable. One guy broke off a playground with their wings and broke their arm and chipped their tooth, and this person almost fucking died. We are lowering the bar with every story. At this point, I started to actually fucking drown and yeah. fell unconscious. But on the bright side, <laughs> I technically got what I wanted. Yeah, that's Riz. Hey, you committed to it. Congratulations. New first, first place chatter. This is the third place story. Yeah, congratulations. Honestly, though, 14 is absolutely the age for this kind of behavior. This is like teenage sex comedy, like super bad shit, right? I gotta get laid. What am I gonna do? I'll go drown. I mean, this is this is some Jonah Hill, Michael, Michael Sarah shit. Yeah. It's an actual Sandlot moment. Wait, really? I didn't know the Sandlot had that in it. I thought that movie was about baseball. That's real? I was a little Giants guy. I never watched Sandlot. When I wanted to have a first kiss with my girlfriend and didn't know how to ask, yep. I elaborately planned to ask during a movie we were watching. Okay. By the way, uh, the, the TTS does not read stuff in parentheses, so I'm going to take it out of parentheses. 
and uh, rerun this so you can see what movie they were talking about. I elaborate. There we go. To we got during it. a movie we were watching. It was Top Gun. Top Gun. When it got to the scene where they started to kiss. I asked, "What do you think about <laughs> us doing that?" But about as soon as the question ended, the scene was switched into a copious sex scene. You know the one. That is simply too much Riz. Shall we? I've never seen Top Gun, so I don't know the scene. But I can imagine it was funny. It went poorly that time. Yeah. And she just played it off as confused. <laughs> oh, d uh, what? D do what? Do I don't know what that is. We ended up getting married eventually, Aww. but the first kiss took a few more weeks because I was an awkward person. I mean, I... I don't blame you for that. One, bless up. Congratulations. I guess it worked. However, I do not recommend chatters you to try this, this same strategy. Chatters, don't do this. Don't see this person's success and be like, oh, there we go. I want a wife. I'm going to wake up tomorrow, check Twitter. For some reason, Top Gun is the number one movie on streaming right now. Thousands of Americans are, are watching it with their sweeties. Just holding for the scene. Just, just a forbidden technique. Yeah. How many times do they kiss before the sex scene? You're gonna have to like pre-watch it. You're gonna have to be sure. You can't be every kiss. Oh, that's a great story. That is a fantastic story. That's tremendous. Freshman year of high school, I tried out for our baseball team. Mm -hmm. I was pretty good and made varsity as a pitcher freshman year, but didn't start. Yep. Our school was pretty small and private, so it wasn't that impressive. Still proud of you. Our playoff game was away. I, of course, was riding the bench. Our starter pitch to the fifth, and I came in for the sixth. Mm -hmm. I throw my first pitch as fastball. Uh -oh. I overextend and little no to me I had a fat bowl of crab dip two hours before the game. You know, we've been pretty good about the pants shitting stories. Only one, and it, it really didn't even need it. The one story that has been involved with pants shitting was really, it was, it was the dessert, right? Like, the rest of the story was fine and it stood on its own. But that was the sort of after-dinner mint. Did you shit your pants? I shit my pants and <laughs> turned my ankle. Oh, even better. Our shortstop laughed so hard he couldn't make the play. <laughs> I haven't played baseball since. Did theater instead. It's not me. I. It's not me. I know what you're going to say. I already know what you're going to say. I did not write this story. That's not me. I, as soon as I saw theater, this guy is setting me up. I didn't write that. I know this is a frame job. They're framing me on this. We finally found Cody's. I have not written mine in, actually. I haven't. I'm nervous about writing mine in because I feel like I'm going to have a tell. I don't know why, but I feel like I would have a tell. Like, even if mine did get picked, like, that people would know it was me. On your first pitch, you shit your pants. You just explode, huh? And turn your ankle imagine being the other team here comes the closer only a couple innings left here comes timmy baseball pants are white too that's true yeah you can you can get out of that if you tried Hey, poop humor's funny if you have a good setup. You can't tell me that's not a good setup. That's a great bit, and I'm proud of myself for doing it. When I was like five or six years old, my parents used to bring me to fairs all the time. Okay. Thinking back on what happened now, this still holds up as one of the most awkward situations in my life. You're really selling to it. To preface, I never experienced much up until around this age. <laughs> So when I heard that dwarfs existed, I never actually believed it. The second little person story of the night, huh? Not again, yeah. At this particular fair, I happened to notice that there was a dwarf working down a pathway with a few other people. And boy was I shocked. Okay. So shocked that I decided to say they're real. Out loud. Loud enough that he heard me. Oh god! I was so terrified when oh, he looked at god. me and eyed me down that my parents out of secondhand embarrassment decided that we needed to leave right then and there. Wait, so you... You treated him like he was a mystical elf? You thought he was like... Like from Tolkien. Like from... Uh, like a Lord of the Rings dwarf. That's what you thought. Yeah. Like Gimli, right? 
Yeah, this one isn't so okay. bad thinking about it because I was a child, but whenever this story pops up in my head I can't help but cringe. It's pretty bad. Being a kid and having so many people stare at you is awful. Yeah, I, it's pr that's pretty bad. But it's not that bad. That guy probably gets that every single day of his life, which is so sad. We say it's not so bad. <laughs> We're all like here like, oh, it's not so bad. Every kid does it. And that guy is just, oh my god, not again. Why is every child denying my existence? Why is every child incredulous to the fact that I walk the earth? Every kid below eight years old doesn't know that people like me are real. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Cringe Confessional. What was your favorite story? Mine is definitely Master Chief. I like Master Chief completing the optional objective. All right, I know chat's sad. Top Gun, Top Gun's a good answer. Chat is sad, so I'm going to make you guys happy. Hold on, let's get them to show back up. Hold on. Thank you guys for tuning in to Cringe Confessional. Guys, did you have a good time? I had a great time. I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I hope you enjoyed it more than these guys. Thanks for watching Cringe Confessional. I'll see you in a month. We do this once a month. If you want to watch it live, come to twitch.tv slash Cody. If you don't want to watch it live, that's fine. There's a lot of stuff that we cut out anyway. I'll see you guys next time. Like, subscribe, goodbye. Comment too.